In this lecture, we are going to be looking at the concept of encapsulation. This is a very important concept in object-oriented programming, and I'll indulge you to pay attention. The most basic idea in OOP is that each object, as we have also seen so far in this series, contains some data and behavior. Or if you like, you can say contains some data and code. The object takes requests from other client objects but does not expose the details of its data or code to them. The object alone is responsible for its own state. It exposes only public messages to clients and declares private the properties and method that makes up its implementation. In a very simple terms, encapsulation refers to protecting the internals of an object from direct manipulation by the client. The client can send messages, but the client does not change the bit into the object directly. Let's consider a very basic example, a portable disc player. The Denver portable CD player that you see on screen here, it's a very clear example of what encapsulation means. As you can see, at the very front of the player, we have some buttons. These are the public method that has been exposed to the client. With these buttons, we can actually interact with the CD player. For example, I can press the open button and it opens the CD player. I can press the play button and it begins to play any media which is inside of the CD player. But I don't really care about the internal workings when I click on the play button. I don't know what is going on inside of the CD player and I really don't care. When I click on the open button, I really don't care what is going on inside. All I care about is that it actually opens the player. I get the end result. So this is what encapsulation means. It means that we allow the clients to perform the actions that they want to perform using messages, but then they don't know how this is actually being done internally. The implementation is hidden from them. I cannot change how the open operation works in the CD player. I cannot change how the pause operation works in the CD player. And frankly, I honestly don't care. I only want to see the result. So this is what encapsulation means in a very simple term. Let's now see how we can actually implement encapsulation in PHP. The way that we basically implement encapsulation in PHP is using visibility or access modifiers. As I've explained just now, the main concept of encapsulation is that we are able to protect the internal working and then expose only public methods to the client. So we don't want the client to be able to change what is actually going on inside of the program, but then the client should only be able to use what we provide to them, which are the public interfaces. In order to do that in PHP, we use visibility. If you've noticed so far, I've used the keyword public before the property name, and I've also used the keyword public before the name of the functions that we've defined here. When we use the public keyword before the properties of a class, we are saying that the properties can actually be manipulated from outside of the class. And then when we use the public keyword before a function declaration, we are actually saying that this function can be called from anywhere outside of the class. But we are not limited to using just public. We can also use private. We can also use protected in PHP. This is what we are going to be illustrating in this lecture. So we are going to start with private. Change the declarations here to private. So I'm going to say private type and then do the same thing for the others. And then let's scroll down to where we create a new object. I'm going to attempt to assess the properties of this object. And right here you see that I can only have access to the post method and the play method. This is because if we look at the code again, these are the only two things that are still public inside of the code other than the constructor which we don't call directly. So we have the public function play and then public function pause. But all the other properties are now private. I'm going to say introduction publish at equals to true just as we did previously. And then let's do a vadump. Right now we should actually get an error. It says fatter error. Uncut error cannot access private properties. 
This is because we have now changed the visibility to private. The same thing is true if I change the visibility to protected. And then let's do a reload on the browser. You can see we get the same error, cannot access protected properties. So the basic thing that you need to understand here is when we declare a property private, it can only be accessed inside of the class. It cannot be accessed outside of the class or when we instantiate the class, we cannot actually access that object as long as it is private. When the property is protected, they are only visible to classes to which they belong and any subclass. So for example, we have not yet gotten to inheritance, but then we have the ability to actually extend the functionality of this class. So we can create another kind of video, let's say large video, which will extend the functionality of this class. If they are protected properties in this class, then that large video class will be able to have access to those properties, but from outside of the class we cannot have access so private means it is only visible to the class to which it belongs protected means it is visible to the class which it belongs and any subclass any class that extends the class that that property or method belongs to so the question now is if everything is private all of the properties are private and the methods are also private how then does the client now interact with the object that we create from this class? It's very simple. This is where the concepts of getters and setters now come in. We have already established the fact that if it is private or protected, it can be assessed from within the class that it belongs to. So we can then create getters and setters and expose those to the client to be able to manipulate these properties. Let's consider a few examples. We have to say public function set published so this method is going to be responsible for changing the state of the published property this is going to take one parameter which will either be true or false to make this a boolean boolean state and then right here we can then say this published equal to state and then we can create another method public function get published and then right here we are just going to say return this published and we can do the same thing for title so we can come down here and say public function set title and then this is going to take one parameter which is going to be the title and then we can say this title is equal to the parameter that is passed in title public function get title and then this is just going to return this title. So if we go back to the concept of the portable CD player, these are the public methods that will allow the client to actually interact with the object. So for example, we have created public methods to allow the client to set a title for this video. We have also created a public method to allow the client to get the title of this video. We have created a public method to allow the client to set the published property of this video and also to get what is the state of the published property of this video. So if we look at this method, public function get published this looks like something that we can actually make private because if we come back into our play method we are checking here to see if the video is published then only we play the video so we can then come here set this to be private and then inside of the play method we can then return this get published and then we can create one more property here so let's say private play status so this is going to track for us if the video is currently playing so let's come inside of here and change the implementation if this gets published if the video has been published when the client clicks on the play button then we want to change the state of this play status to be equal to true so this means that the video is playing so we can say return the video is playing otherwise the video is not yet available and then now we can come inside of the post method and say if this play status so if the play status is true then we can say the video is paused we can only manipulate this property from inside of the class play status this is because we defined it as 
private. So let's now come down to the implementation. And then I'm also going to get rid of the constructor. And then right here, we get rid of all of the parameters. Create a new instance of the video class. We save it in this variable called introduction. And here we can say introduction set published and then pass it a value of true. And then introduction play. Here, let's do a reload on the browser. Right now, we don't get anything. So let's echo introduction play. You can see the video is playing. So we can then come here, say introduction, set title. So right now we can set the title and say introduction to OOP. And then here we can echo introduction, get title, and then end it with the PHP EOL. And next we can actually copy this and then say introduction play. And then we can also pause the video. Introduction, pause. Let's do a reload on the browser. Here we get introduction to OOP. The video is playing, the video is paused. Set the content type to test playing. And then we can see this on a separate line. So just a quick recap. We have discussed the concept of encapsulation, which is basically the idea of hiding information. So we hide as much information as we need to hide about the implementation of the object and simply expose some public property through setters and getters that allows the client to actually engage with this object. And we've also seen that when we declare a property private, in PHP or we declare a method private in PHP, it cannot be accessed from outside of the class. So we try to access get published. You can see that we cannot actually see it. My test editor actually cannot detect that method in this class. So copy this and then bring it here. You can see that it's already underlined this member as private access. It cannot be accessed from outside of the class. The only way that the client can actually interact with this is using setters. So the client can actually set the public status of the video. So you can set the status to published and then you can play the video but then you don't have control about getting when it was published. So this is just a very basic example to illustrate the concept of encapsulation. The whole idea is information hiding. We want to hide as much information as we can hide from the client so that the client only gets what they need to actually perform the operation that we want them to perform. So in this case, we want the client to be able to play a video. We want the client to be able to pause a video, but we do not want the client to be able to change the properties of the video from outside of the methods that we have provided. So we have provided a method to allow you set the title. You don't care about what actually goes on when the title is being set. So the, what the client does is call this method, pass in the required value. Here we have said you must pass in a string. Whatever goes on in line 23 is completely hidden from the client. The client doesn't know what we are doing on line 23. So this is the whole notion of encapsulation.